afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us on our premium support webinar, uh, Producing DODAF 2.0 Viewpoints in Core. I have with me on the line Cliff Levine, uh, one of our principal engineers, and he will be our presenter today. We would be happy to answer any questions you have online or off, depending on the nature of the question, following Cliff's presentation. So please feel free to type your questions into the chat box and we will answer them uh, directly following Cliff's discussion. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Cliff. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're having all having a nice day. Uh, this is, webinar is going to talk about DODAF, and mainly DODAF 2.0. We're going to talk a little bit about how to develop a DODAF architecture in core and then how to get the various DODAF views out of core. OK. Um, so uh, we'll, okay, here's how um, we're going to extend the underlying systems engineering design language so that we can incorporate the DODAF uh, elements into the various architectures and views, and then apply that to the various DODAF views, and integrate the DODAF architecture and the views so that we have a synchronized, consistent presentation. Okay, basically what we're going to cover is we'll talk about the DODAF environment in core, how we build architecture models, covering both the architecture model and its views. There is the operational side, which consists of the operational model and the capability views. There is the, system, the traditional system side, covering systems and services. There is also program management aspects, covering program management and there are a couple of miscellaneous areas, one referring to data views, both for the uh, operational side and the system side, and finally, one view carrying covering standards and development of standards and their potential impact on system design. Uh, it is very important to make sure that those of you who are trying to implement DODAF and DODAF views, you, to have the DODAF views, you must have a copy of Core 7, uh, the essential version. The essential version covers um, the DODAF and some advanced system L views, but that is a, a basic requirement to implement the scripts that we're going to be showing you today. OK, here is a statement from the Department of NA, uh, Defense uh, covering DODAF. Um, the main thing is uh, that DODAF 2.0 differs greatly from DODAF 1.5 and earlier versions. Those of you who remember 1.5, 1.5 was mainly about the views themselves and what those views ought to look like. The Department of Defense was virtually describing what information was going to go in there and how that information was going to go in. Basically, in DODAF 2.0, um, they're taking a different approach. And the approach is more to focus on the architecture itself and the data and the relationships between the various data elements, and then give more freedom to the uh, user to determine, or I should say, the those involved, both the user and the audience, to develop what exactly they want to present in the views. Much more flexibility in the view itself, uh, but much more uh, aware of the information that is behind that. In 1.5, a lot of times the views were prepared with graphical tools, and therefore there was no consistency between the information across the tools. 
across the views, I should say. Okay, so we're basically going to take the core uh, model-based system engineering approach, which is to build a model, an architectural model covering both the operational side and the system side and the project management side. All three uh, aspects will be incorporated into the view. There'll be data elements for each of those, and there'll be relationships between the various elements so that we have a consistent, complete set of information. Okay. Um, this is going to basically, as we've said, uh, you know, help us optimize our presentations, validate our design to make sure that we have consistent information. What is shown on one view is consistent with other views. A piece of information that is shown on a view, if that appears on another view, that's the same piece of information. There's complete consistency and traceability of, of that information. Okay, this is the traditional model-based system engineering. Those of you mostly are probably familiar with this, showing the four domains, uh, problem definition domain, behavior analysis, architecture synthesis, and V and V. We're going to be following that same uh, model and layout when we develop uh, the operational model and in the system model as part of our architecture. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the core environment. Okay, uh, for example, one of the key elements in the DoDAP model is the architecture. So we have created in core an architecture element. It has such attributes as number and uh, description and number. Also has some other attributes like purpose and time frame and so on and so forth. Uh, a model, uh, an architecture, I should say, is comprised of both operational uh, nodes. Um, the operational nodes are often referred to as performers. You'll see the term performers in core. Um, basically, the operational node dates back to 1.5. I apologize for that. But in uh, 2.0, you'll see performer there instead of operational node. And it has its attributes like number and, and, and description and structure. Okay. And on the system side, you have the traditional components, which could be systems, system of systems, family of systems, or, or individual hardware and software configuration items. Uh, so, and um, on the operational side, the performers perform uh, operational activities, which would be implemented by the system side functions. So you see you have a very similar layout on both the operational side on the left and the component side on the right. This is a more detailed uh, view of the architecture. But the uh, important thing, the simple thing, is that you have an architect on the operational side, which is the left-hand side. You have an architecture. You have performers, operational activities. Operational activities have inputs and outputs and triggers that are known as operational items that are transferred along need lines, which have exchange characteristics. Okay. Uh, that's very similar to the operational side, component, function, uh, its inputs, outputs, and triggers, which are items which are transferred along links. So each of the primary elements on the left-hand side, such as a performer, an operational activity, etc., have a corresponding or implemented by item on the system side. So individual performance can be implemented by components. Operational activities could be implemented by functions. With DODAF 2.0, there was a new item added to the schema with, uh, on the operational side known as capabilities. This would be the, the basically the new capabilities that the architecture is intended to uh, be based around. 
and uh, that would be uh, implemented, ultimately be implemented in requirements on the system side. Okay, here is how the, the two sides tie into the program management, okay, both the performance and the components can be supplied by program elements. Program elements would be your work breakdown structure as to what uh, activities and tasks are going to make up your various programs. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how one goes about building a, a DODAP model. Okay, basically here is the layout. It's a basic model-based approach. We are going to first determine what is the intended use, identify those, uh, the scope, the, um, and then determine the, uh, the data required to support the architecture development and conduct our analysis and document all of this. As far as the DODAP manuals themselves are concerned, just a reference point, there are basically three ma volumes of DODAP 2.0. The fir first volume really gives you an overview of the background information behind DODAP. Volume 2 is the key model as far as we're concerned today. That basically describes what the various views are supposed to uh, contain, the kind of information they're supposed to address. And then finally, uh, volume 3 talks a lot about the meta model, which is how the data items are, what are the data items that they suggest and uh, the various relationships and characteristics of those data items. Okay, um, basically we want to leverage uh, defined system process along with, with into the core environment. Okay, generate our DODAP views from that environment and maintain traceability between the engineering elements and the various DODAP views. So let's talk a little bit about those views. Okay, uh, this is from the DODAP Volume 1. Basically, the, the views are broken up into these uh, eight areas. You basically have the all views, that was also basically very similar to what you had in DODAP 1.5. There are things like that describe the architecture, and they also can be a, a, a data dictionary for the in, entire uh, model. You also have um, now you have a new set of views with DODAP 2.0, which are the capability views. These are the various capabilities that the architecture needs to address and how those capabilities relate to other uh, aspects of the model. You also have your operational views, which are very similar to what you had in DODAP 1.5, and the system views, which again are similar to 1.5, and this time they have broken out the services views in DODAP 2.0, so there's a separate set of services views along with the system views. Okay, there are a couple other areas. One, there is the data and information views. Um, as I said, these talk about the data items that are being exchanged by the operational activities on the operational side and between function on the systems and services side. So there are, all those data items are, de, are uh, described in those data and information views. You also have the project views. These are the project uh, elements from the work breakdown structure and the various uh, portions of either capabilities or uh, operational items or uh, services and systems that, that they're going to supply. Okay. 